So, Sam, this is the panel where we're giving away a million dollars. These folks are, wow. From Kazak. <laughs> From Kazak. Yeah. <laughs> Kazak. <laughs> All right. Well, it is 1 p.m. We like to do things on time here at Dice Tower West. So thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Sam Healy and Friends panel, 1 p.m. You, thank you for being so excited. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> was that was yeah. a great yeah. boost to our collective. Does that mean I'm your they, yeah. they haven't been a crowd long, but I give them five minutes and they will know how to be a good crowd. That's right. Yes, that's very good. All right. So what we're going to do today, um, these are some... Ba okay, let's be honest. These are acquaintances of mine hey. from... You just told me that, that was your I, I know, yes. Well, let me get there. I love These are rate acquaintances that of mine that wow. we are friendly with, and we are looking forward to becoming great friends in the future. Nice out. Thank you. Yes. Um, but uh, so Sam and friends, these are just uh, four people that I have known in the industry, and uh, I'll actually, if I can... I put in there what I think was the first time we each met. Oh. So I don't know if it's going to be accurate. You'll correct me if, if I'm wrong, but we'll see how that goes. All right, so we're going to be doing our top five games that we've never played for no good reason. We cannot give you a good reason why we have not played this game. We just have not played them. And so that's where we're going to be going. And, I think uh, I've got good reasons. Go ahead. You got. You don't have good reasons for anything uh, you do, Brian. That's fair. But I, I, I like my, to my think I do. My reasons are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so just some introductions. First of all, if you don't know me, I am Sam Healy. I have been a uh, full-time uh, person. Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes. Uh, so I, I used to be full-time with the Dice Tower. I actually was the uh, Dice Tower podcast co-host after Joe. Is it, who, who remembers Joe? Joe, one person. I'm okay. going to pass that along. There's only one person wow. that remembers you, Joe. Right, who remembers Sam? Uh, yeah, right. Who remembers me, right? So, uh, after Joe and before Eric, I was the co-host of the uh, podcast. And I've known Tom since we were friends in college. So, it's been a while. Uh, so that's that. I am a part-timer with the Dice Tower now, and I also have my own channel called The Flip Side of Board Games that I do full-time, and so that is me. I'm also kind of a uh, budding uh, community organizer in my local area. We're running, my wife and I are running um, uh, board game nights on a regular basis every month, and uh, we're trying to branch out into our community a little bit as well. So we have a very community-based uh, look at doing content creation. Uh, so we do a lot of lives, and, and so I don't want to turn this into a commercial, but that's who I am. <laughs> Next is Bree Goldman. Hi, I'm Bree Goldman. Let's yeah. see what you said about Okay, uh, I said that you are the marketing manager at Arcane Wonders. That you are true. passionate about being passionate. I pulled that off of your page. <laughs> and uh, we actually met officially at PAX Unplugged, but we've known each other digitally. from a distance, yeah. digitally. And through, for, for through social somewhere. media for at least two or three years, I yeah, think. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So uh, that is Brie Goldman. Anything you want to say about yourself? There you go. Um, yeah, so I am full-time marketing manager for Arcane Wonders. I live here in Las Vegas, so this is my local convention. Uh, I did another convention immediately before this one, which is why I'm on day five voice instead oh, of day boy. two voice. Yeah. Uh, so I apologize in advance for the uh, scratchiness. Um, ooh, thank you. Nicola. New best friend here. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we have a ton of upcoming titles and new releases at our booth right across the way. Come check them out. Very cool. Very cool. All right, that's Bree. And next is BJ Shay. Hi, BJ. Hello, hello. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Sam, Sam, do you have anything to say about me? Like where we met was probably a dark alley making a board game transaction. <laughs> that wasn't the case. That was, a, I mean, it was close. It was in Philly, so it was pretty dark. Yes, so it was. that's uh, Pax Unplugged, and I can't remember the year, but it was before the COVID purge. Yes, yeah, yes. It was um, before then. I think it was like around 
I want to say 2018. I think you're right, and uh, you were you were one of the you were actually one of the, the the people of Dice Tower that wasn't irritated with me at dinner, and you and I had a nice conversation. <laughs> I, I, I think Tom was a, he, Tom heard enough of me and how much I love Twilight Imperium, yeah. and you were like, oh, I like this guy. Yeah. Number one, Twilight Imperium. Number two, slightly irritating Tom. So it, it was a win-win. Yeah, that's a hat trick right there, buddy. All right, so he is a prolific podcaster. Um, part of he has his own podcaster, Geek Nation, correct? Yeah, Facebook page, all over the socials. I also host a, a radio show in Seattle, but you can get it anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Uh, and it's just BJ, Shea, and Sarah. And we talk about all sorts of stuff. But also the podcast is more geeky, yeah. the stuff on Facebook and all of the socials. But I just love board gaming. That's really my sweet spot. And I'm happy to be here because uh, the fact that I'm just... I'm just, I should be sitting out there, but Sam was like, hey, why don't you come up here and tell everybody why you didn't play these games? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because BJ, uh, I, I had no idea that, that he did this, but when I actually moved up to Washington State, he warned the entire state that I was coming yeah. um, on his radio show. Yeah, I did. And uh, that was interesting. A friend of mine sent it to me later on, and so that was pretty cool. So well, yeah, good. luckily you're on, you know, you're on the east side of the state, yes. and I felt like on the west side we had time, just in case you decided to invade. <laughs> also, we had time I, to prepare. Also a mountain range in between. Yeah, there is a mountain range, yes, and that's Safety the only night. reason I haven't yeah. taken over yet. So I haven't been able I'm to so happy there. we put that there. Um, <laughs> we Minecrafted that there because we just knew. <laughs> we Minecrafted that. So that's BJ Shea. And finally, last but definitely not least... Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely not least. This is Brian Wade. He works ungodly hours. Um, and usually when I am halfway through my day, he is saying, hey, good morning. And that's because he has worked all night, slept, and then he's getting up. Let's not go too far. I probably haven't slept. <laughs> that's probably true. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, he also demos games. Like, are you demo game, demoing games for Mantic? Right I now? am demoing yeah. games for Mantic so, Games. So um, go ahead and do that. And he also runs his uh, uh, Gaming with ADHD YouTube channel. And uh, we met here at Dice Tower West. Last year. Last year. Last year. That's correct. Sam barely knows me. He's made a mistake, but he doesn't realize it yet. <laughs> so. <laughs> no. He actually knows someone else who kind of looks like him. Uh huh. And that's who you thought he was when you reached out to exactly. him. Exactly. That's probably true. I did. And then I just couldn't come back off of it. Yeah. Some other guy with a beard. Too probably. Excited. <laughs> um, All right. So tell us about yourself, Brian. So, yeah, I, uh, I've been a gamer for decades. Um, I am here running demos for Mantic Games. We're demoing Dungeon Saga Origins and uh, uh, Hellboy the board game. Uh, Dungeon Saga Origins. Tom did put up a review recently. I think he was a little harsh. Come check it out. It's actually pretty good. Um, but uh, also Hellboy. Uh, the funny thing is I know pretty much nothing about Hellboy outside of I saw the movie 20 years ago. But I absolutely love the game, and so come check it out. I'll show it to you. We are only doing demos from like ten to two because um, this is still my vacation, so yeah. we want to play a little bit. And um, there's only like two of you doing it, and there's only two of us yeah. doing it. So I'm a little so. jealous of that because this is I live here, so this is usually my vacation convention. Right. <clears throat> but Arcane Wonders has such a close relationship with yeah. the Dice Tower. We published the Dice Tower Essentials line of games, which mm -hmm. are hand picked by Tom and brought in from all over the world for us to publish using the Dice Tower Essentials uh, product line. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a booth here and lots of games that we are, uh, uh, we've got World Wonders and Age of Wonders Planet Fall now <clears throat> and Neotopia, but then we also were demoing Ito, which we we're bringing over later this year from Japan and uh, Vegetable Stock and a couple of other games that will be coming into the Dice Tower Essentials line. Very cool. So Oh, cool. uh, but then also last thing, Sorry. I do have a small YouTube channel. It's not as cool as Sam's. No, um, it is. Uh, gaming with ADHD, board games, car card games, role playing, miniatures, uh, whatever my brain decides to talk yeah. about that day. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, we we also do some uh, some collaborations. Every we need to do while. more. We need to do more. We ha he has a amateur painting hour on Friday mornings uh, before he goes to bed. Yes. <laughs> and when I wake up, we. <laughs> You know, like 
dazedly paint miniatures in, in a very amateurish way. Very. Yes. Yeah, so I've gotten very, better. Yeah, you have. <laughs> I've gotten worse, I think. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, anyway, all right. So we're going to be doing our, like I said, top five games we've never played for no good reason. So, so my list was formulated by simply turning around in my chair and looking at the shelves of my collection and saying, oh yeah, I haven't played that one yet either. <laughs> <laughs> or that one. Or that one. This was a very easy list to make. I did not have to do very much research at all. I just had to sit there shamefacedly looking at my own collection and saying, yeah, I really do need to get that one to my collection. That's, it's collecting dust and I, I think I would really, really enjoy that game. So three of my five games, I did exactly that. Yeah. These are games that I own, that I have wanted to play, and just haven't right. made time to get to the yeah. table. Uh, and then the other two, <clears throat> I asked some friends for help, but what we wound up doing was looking at other people's top ten lists mm. and finding games that are like, somebody feels like this is good enough to be in their top ten, yeah. and yet I have never played it. Right. And that's where my other two came from. Okay. DJ. There is an asterisk, and uh, some of you may experience this it, if you've I, got... I already saw the video. Yeah, I know. I was going to scold and, you, but I left you alone. I, 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 and Bonacore already just, he already <laughs> browbeat me about this. But the asterisk is, and a lot of you may have this, is that you've got board game groups. And I don't know about your board game group, but we're, we have a big group of gamers in Seattle uh, called the Omega Gamers. Some of them are sitting in the front row. And we play games and don't play games depending upon the people in the group. And so for some reason, sometimes there's a great game out there that like, hey, you know, we should play this. And the group goes, no, we shouldn't. And then it just <laughs> never happens. And there's so a lot of these games are because our group is just like, I don't know why, but we don't want to play it. And I'm like, well, you're my friends, so I guess I won't play it, and I'll play whatever we're going to play. <laughs> that's, that's positive proof that groupthink isn't always the best choice. All right, Brian. Uh, so I am kind of a hybrid of all of these. I pick some literally on my shelf that I haven't played, but then I also tried to take uh, the Jeopardy approach to it and actually pick things that you all might relate to and be like why why have you not played this yet and there's no good reason, no good reason. <laughs> all right well here we go i'm going to start first and then we'll we'll just basically go down the line that way so brian will actually have the final say which i don't know if that will be a good idea or not but we'll see why all, all right. the mistakes today What's that? Why all the mistakes today? I don't know. I'm, I'm good at making mistakes. Oh, I Happy little mistakes. We still like you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, good. And gosh darn it, people like me. All right. So. My number five is a game called Space Hulk. And I don't know why it's not oh, switching yeah, around. Oh, yeah, good one. Space one. Hulk, I have been a fan of of Warhammer 40k for a very long time and I have had this particular copy of Space Hulk on my shelf um, I believe it is still unopened um, so if anybody wants to purchase it I, I, I do, well, no I'm not going to do that we might need to talk. Uh, I do have <laughs> I do have this on my shelf it is ripe for the playing I just haven't ever taken that step of going and getting it to the table, making sure all of the miniatures are put together. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to do that at some point. Um, but I also have a whole lot of other games workshop titles that are faster to get to the table. And that's probably why. I just don't think that that's a good reason. Um, uh, but Space Hulk is, I know I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, but I just haven't got it there yet. Uh, it's by Games Workshop. This is the fourth edition, the 2019 one, but uh, it's been sitting on my shelf for years, and it's literally boring into my skull as I'm thinking about it right now, because I know I, I know I'm going to enjoy it. I know I'm going to love it. I know I'm going to have fun, but I just haven't got it to the table yet. And I'm not going to lie, I'm, <clears throat> I'm incredibly jealous that you have a copy, yeah. because I owned a copy of Space Hulk when I was a teenager, oh, and I have played it, and I loved it. Oh, man. And some point between high school and college and moving out on my own, yep. my mom got rid of it. Yeah. And I don't have it anymore. Oh, so 
sad. All right, it's sad face. Your mom got rid of it. Oh, that just landed <laughs> without contacting you. She just, just stuff. Wow. And that was one of them. <laughs> Throwing out all the fun stuff, parents. Yeah, right? that's like a Those that's jerks. like a comic book, <laughs> a box full of comic books. Right. Yeah, uh, X Men number, you know the the new X Men number one. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Oh. <laughs> that was a beating. That's brutal. That was a big beating, and uh, we never spoke again. So I didn't even know that this had. <laughs> I didn't realize that this had been reprinted so recently. I might yeah. have to try to. Yeah, you yeah. probably can chase down a copy. Yeah, easy. Mm -hmm. easy but not easy. yours. No, not mine. Not <laughs> well, and technically, this particular version, not the fourth edition printing whatever it was technically it was supposed to be a one-off and they oh. were never going to reprint it you know <laughs> again and of course games workshop just and you believe that <laughs> 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 but yeah i even owned it and punched it and put all the miniatures together mm -hmm. never played it it's so what? good and got rid of it you oh no <laughs> Oh, man. I don't feel like a stooge now. All right. But you know what I do have that isn't on my list, <clears throat> but I haven't played, is Space Hulk Death Angel. Yeah. There's like a small box card game. Yeah, a little game. small box card game. And I, and I really enjoyed that game. So it's basically the same idea mm -hmm. as Space Hulk, but just with miniatures and on the table. And so that's, man, I gotta get that to the table. All right, Breeze, number five. Okay. Let, just let me know when you want me to hit it. So my number five is one of the ones that I had to source from other people's lists. This is one that I feel like so many people I know love this game, and I've just never played it. And that is Targi. Targi. So this one, it's beautiful. The, the box is beautiful. It's beautiful on the table. I have no reason whatsoever to have not played it, but I don't own it. Mm. And it's just never come up. At, I could get together where we're like, let's play Targi. Yeah. Probably because it's two players, right? You could usually be. wanting to play games with more than yep. just two, especially at an event. Yep, very so. Much so. I can see where, and, and, and you don't own it. That's another, I'm trying to help you out here. I'm Thank trying you. to help you feel better. <laughs> um, you don't own it. But yeah, I noticed that I didn't put the reasons on this one because I can't read mine. So uh, they're going to explain what? the reasons. No, yeah, I know, right? So disappointed. So, uh, so what are your options for rectifying this injustice in your gaming? Uh, well, first of all, maybe <clears throat> checking it out from the library yeah. here and finding some <laughs> nice person in this audience who would like to play it with me. Here. I've got a volunteer. Love it. Excellent. Thank you. Very cool. <laughs> See, we're, we're, we're identifying the problem and finding solutions. Love it. There we go. All right, very good. BJ, let me know when you want me to hit it. Buddy. Okay, we're ready right now. Right now? Uh, the number five game that I have not played for really any good reason is Twilight Struggle. There's a slight good reason because, uh, like Targi, it's a two-player game, and the problem is, is that I am very social. I am a negotiator. I'm an instigator. I'm an intimidator because I don't have any skill. So. <laughs> If there's only one person, if I can't really influence them to make bad decisions, there's nobody else at the table I can influence them. Which is why with Twilight Struggle, it's like, oh, it's just you, and you know how to play games better than me, and you know not to listen to me. Um, so, that, so pretty much any of the games on the list, if they're two-player, you know that that's the reason. But you'd think with Twilight Struggle, you got the Cold War, over 40 years of hostilities. I mean, it's America versus communism. You'd think that the allure of GMT's cardboard, crunchy campaign would have me rushing to the table, but no. No. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, and, and nobody in the game group wants to, maybe because they feel like it'll be hours of me browbeating them saying, <laughs> why are you making that move? Why are you doing that? And they'll go, you're going to lose. I know, but I'm going to make you hate winning. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's right. That's good. That's good. Uh, I have noticed, though, that, that people, when they see GMT, they're intimidated almost immediately. Yeah. Because they're so, um, GMT is such a, like a war game yeah. company, and that's what they immediately think of. So I'm not going to be able to grok all the rules, I'm not going to be able to, 
uh, you know, memorize all the spreadsheets or anything like that. It's one of those games that, but it's not actually that difficult to play. It's just a card driven. Yeah, card-driven and you know, GMT has a lot of games like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, the ancient civilization games, which mm-hmm. may look like that. Also, uh, Space Core, mm-hmm. they have. I, I, you know, granted, their components, yeah, they are what they are, sure. but that's not what they hang their hat on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I like a lot more GMT, <laughs> but again, you have more players, yep. so it's not GMT themselves. That's why I said it. You would think I'd be like all over this because it's right. GMT, because I do love GMT, but again, it's just two players. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing about Twilight Struggle, I just recently played it for the first time, just in like the last six months. I found it's definitely the kind of game where I would like an experienced teacher, but also <clears throat> this game is like the knowledge of the games and what what cards are coming and what's going to happen mm-hmm. is a massive advantage. Yep. So learning for the first time and playing against someone who has played it before is yeah. definitely tricky. Yeah, you really have to have the right teacher that's yep. not going to just hammer you the entire time. They're actually going to help you understand the game. So. That's a bit of a pro tip, isn't it? When you say, hey, when you're teaching somebody a game, don't try to win <laughs> so that they'll want to play the game with you again or any exactly. game with you again. Yeah. That's right. Or at least don't try to completely destroy them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. Brian, number five. All right. So this game is literally everywhere. And <laughs> it is. It is I, everywhere. Oh, just put it up there. Okay. It's it's wingspan. Oh! <laughs> wow! I feel better about my list. <laughs> um, so I'll be honest. I I look at this game like they've got Wormspan over in the hot games area, and I realize that wingspan is yes, it's different, but it's not that different. I look at it and I'm like, I have no idea what's happening here, and my brain just nopes out. I'm like, nope, mm. done. I mean, I probably should sit down and play it, but. Yeah. Also, um, I just I never have. Yeah. No one's no one said, "Hey, I've got this. Would you like to play?" And mm-hmm. like, so this is another game that's super intimidating on the table because it's so big. It has a big footprint, and there is a lot of things that are happening. It is super not difficult. But the game itself is surprisingly approachable. Yeah. Like I, if you get if you have a good teacher, you will have no problem. I it. thoroughly believe you. And it's just never happened. <laughs> it, when I first saw the game, it looked like a science book. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to learn about this. Yeah. I didn't want to learn about this in high school. Right. But, you're, but once you play it, it's, it is really a very fun, it's a beautiful game. But on the other side, I don't own it anymore. Yeah. Because the game group was like, yeah, we're going to move on. Yeah. You know, we, we've had our wingspan, now we're going to go to something new. else. Maybe now it's worm span or dog span. I don't know, some kind of span. <laughs> dog span. That's puppy, the new game, Sam. Span. Dog span. Puppy, puppy span. span. Dogs are hot, right? I, uh, There's a lot of dog food games. Yeah, that's true. It is. Um, I, this is one of the games where my, my oldest son is a huge Amerithrash gamer. He wants to roll dice. He wants a lot of theme. He loves this game. He loves this game. And uh, when Wingspan came out, that was like because birds. I don't care about birds. I mean, sure, they're they're they sound great. They look beautiful, but I don't want to play a game about birds. But when Wingspan came out, uh, that was like okay, dragons. Mm. Now you've got my attention. Now you're speaking now, my language. Mm-hmm. Now you know what to, you, you should talk to me about. Uh, anyway, so that's, uh, and we play Weirdsman, and it's a perfect step up from Wingsman. Yeah. It's the perfect step up. So, so I am also going to make one other point um, and um, throw my wife under the bus. Oh, oh that's so, uh, <laughs> This is being recorded. It's always her fault. No, no, and, uh, it's I not as. Edit it out. It, it's, <laughs> <laughs> she is back there, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, no, so what's been interesting is the last, like, man, maybe for like the last 10 years, she's actually been picking out a lot more of our games. Yeah. But she doesn't necessarily look at it as like, oh, I like these mechanics. This plays like this. No, she's like, this art is pretty, buy it. Yep. And um, I do the same thing. Yeah. Me and too. she. Vincent Dutry. Ching. Yeah. <laughs> but. She has. She hasn't said. You know what? I want to try this one because it's very pretty. I'm not sure. going to lie. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But yeah, that that one did not grab her. Okay. So. All right. It's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's intimidating. 
<laughs> uh, well, well, we're here to tell you it's not that difficult. Moving on to our number fours. Our number four, my number four, has been on my shelf for about four years. About four years, maybe five years, that is Villainous Vikings. Now, some of you are looking at that and going, <laughs> I've never seen that game in my entire life. And that is probably true. Yes, that's probably true. Now, here's the thing. If you don't know me, um, I'm, a, I'm big on Viking-themed games. And uh, somebody a long time ago, about five years ago, said, if you like Viking-themed games, you need to have this in your collection. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll try to pick it up. Maybe I'll be able to find it, maybe I won't. And uh, sure enough, at a flea market, I believe here, uh, before COVID, I was able to find a copy. Maybe it was at Dice Tower East, might have been at Dice Tower East. And I was able to uh, find a copy, picked it up. And it has sat on my shelf ever since. And I just pulled it out. I started a new series of uh, videos on my channel called It Belongs in a Museum. And, uh, and, and so I'm going through games that are on my shelf that I just haven't played in a long time. And so my, the first one was, I um, uh, can't remember the other one, uh, but this was the second one. And I pulled it out. It still hadn't had everything taken apart yet. Oh, wow. Like it still had the, the cardboard, uh, you know, the paper band around the cards. <laughs> had everything still, uh, I, I still have black soot on from the laser oh. cut, oh, wow. the laser cut pieces. So it's, I just haven't played it, but uh, I have firmly resolved to get this played here in the next month or two because I really think it's, it's gonna be a fun experience. I'm gonna change this mic in just a minute because uh, I can hear myself going in and out. But um, it's 35 players, uh, 60 minutes, and it's just been sitting on my shelf. From Victory Point Games, comes in a little VCR tape shaped box. Um, if you don't know what a VCR tape is, it's about this long. <laughs> it's about that thick, and it's a rectangle. And uh, you used to put them into a machine and watch movies on them, so or with them, rather. But anyway, you can Take us back to the old times, Sam. I know, right? <laughs> So my number four is the other one on my list that I do not own a copy of <clears throat> and have had many people recommend this one to me, especially because the main mechanic is mirrored in another game that I really enjoy, and that is Hanabi. Oh, yeah. uh, so I've never played it, but I know about the theme and I know about the mechanic of not being able to see your own cards, uh, but being able to see those of your opponents. <clears throat> so I have one of my very favorite games that is very obscure, and aside from the person who taught it to me, don't know that I've ever met anyone else who owns it or knows about it, and it is a Japanese game called Hell Token Remote Control Robot. <laughs> it's fantastic. That, that, that's not a short, pithy title at no, all. Nope. Yeah. No, not at all. Uh, and it has uh, Katamari Damacy style art with like the, the long, like log-shaped people's heads, mm. uh, and you are controlling a robot remotely and trying to determine the pin code to fully take control of the robot, but your pin code are on, is on your cards facing away from you. Mm. So knowing that I love that mechanic, I feel like this one really should be getting played, but yeah. I don't have it and I've never played it. Yep. Understood. All right, that's number four. So over to you. BJ. Okay, Sam, this is your opportunity I to mean, yeah, just I, I look at me this. with disdain, perhaps the rest of this room, as a matter of fact. This is no longer on this list. Uh, <laughs> number four, War of the Ring. Yeah. Uh, is anybody familiar with this game? Please say, oh, too bad. Uh, a lot of you are. Uh, this almost yeah, made yeah. my list. Uh, there's a video of me talking to Stephen Bonacore, and it's a, you can go on Instagram, B-J-S-H-E-A. Uh, Stephen gives me a very honest opinion about who I am for not playing this game. It is a two-player <laughs> game, so I will at least say that. It's a two-player game. That's your, like, that's, that's your go-to reason for not playing all of this. There's a lot of reasons. Uh, I, it, you know, look, it, it, Sam, as you know, it's a fa it, it is a fantastic game. If you haven't seen it, it's, I, mean, I mean, it's epic. It's got an epic rule book. It's got epic mechanics. It's epic setup time. It's as epic as the epic it's based on. <laughs> and you'd think, oh, this epic would be a pick for my game night. 
But no, no. I, I, I just, it's like, if I'm going to play something that big, again, I will throw a Twilight Imperium on the table because, again, if I can't influence one person to make a bad decision, I've got seven other players to choose from. <laughs> you know, hopefully yeah. go, hey, Jimmy, what do you say you go over there and attack Fred over there? That'd be a great idea for both of us, wouldn't it? <laughs> but I can't do that when it's only one player. Um, and yet, I, 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 it's a, you know, it's a great game, and yet I don't know why I've never sat down and played it. Yeah. I, I have no, I really don't have a good reason. I can't insult sure. this game at all. No, yeah, I get it. I'm not going to insult the game either. Um, I, I don't like the fact that the good guys have to wait to attack. They have to wait to be attacked in order to attack. Oh, That's really? what I don't like about the game. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, me too. I, 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 I <laughs> hate that and fix it, Bonacor. No, Bonacor can't do anything about that. He, I mean, he, he was stronghold. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah, well then, get a new job, Bonacor. <laughs> no, you, you, you're right. He's retired now. Yeah. He's, He's like, I think his job is now I know. traveling. His job is such a great job. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. And then he's still yelling at me. I like the fact to go, oh, you're yelling at me from your yacht? Thanks, pal. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> I'm still out here working. Uh, you, you know, you're right. That is a, that's a tough mechanic because I was watching it being played yep. the, the other day. And I suppose it's balanced, but it does irritate it's me. It's super thematic. It's super thematic. It makes because, sense. Because, you know, the bad guys did, did attack first in the whole thing. So I get it. But uh, Dune, War for Arrakis, is built around this same similar engine, so I'm really looking forward to playing that one. Uh, so Does it have more than two players? Uh, you can play up to four. Oh, is you it, can play is up it kind to of four, teams, though? It's teams, yeah. uh, so you're, you're basically, if, I, if I'm remembering the rules correctly, you're going to... Um, the other ones are, are the allies of the Harkonnen and the allies of the Atreides. So if you play with up to four, if you're just playing with two, you control everything. So, but anyway, with War of the Ring, uh, I've played it, but I like Battle of Five Armies better because it, it's a very similar, but it doesn't have that thing where you have to wait to attack. You yeah. can just attack whenever you want. So that's cool. That's a good pick, though. That's a good game. All right, Brian. All right. So this one was a pick because in the decades that I've been doing all of this, <laughs> this has literally never been an option yeah. for me to play. Never. Never. Oh. Puerto Rico. Man. Oh, yeah. The OG, bro. Yeah. So uh, I was looking at, like, like, like I said, it just never came up. Um, and then as I was looking, it's like, okay, I need to come up with at least like a couple of good reasons. <laughs> um, I realized, so it came out in 2002. I'd been married for about four years at the time. And look at the player count. Mm -hmm. Three to five. Yeah. I literally made a rule, like, early on, because I would be buying these games. You know, Settlers of Catan, all of this stuff. And you need three players to play. Yeah. I'm roughly newly married. Like, at this time, <laughs> I, we would have had a one-year-old. Yeah. Okay. I don't have anyone else to play except with my wife, so... Wrap that one-year-old down. Yeah, that one-year-old. Obviously, <laughs> obviously not advanced. <laughs> <laughs> but so I literally just made myself a rule. I'm not buying games that require three players. Yeah. So um, I think that's just why I ignored it, but... Well, you, you know, know what's happening this year, don't you? Uh, I hear it's getting a reprint. It's getting a monster reprint. <laughs> right. Like a full it's, revision. It's like a revision. Like, uh, isn't it Awakened Realms that's doing it? Awakened Realms style. Puerto Rico. Okay. This is your jumping in point. This is my jumping in point. Yes. But, and that, actually, that's the weird thing. Now that I'm a grown-up, like, I actually have, like, I can get three-player games. Because it's not that hard to snap sure. a third player to play. Yeah. So... You Anyways. could probably pick this up in a flea market somewhere and see if you want to go all in for the big reprint. That's true. That's where I got my copy. Really? Yeah. Yeah? That's cool. So, yeah. So, 22 years later, I still haven't played Puerto Rico. You're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number three is a game that I have had for a couple of years. It's from Fort Circle Games, uh, which is a historically based company, basically. They make a lot of historical games, 
And uh, I just played Votes for Women uh, a couple of days ago after I played Memoir 44, so I've already kind of had a healthy contention of history, game, history games uh, this, uh, this uh, con. But uh, this one I've had on my shelf for a couple of years, and uh, it's called The Shores of Tripoli. And this is a one or two player game. So that was another reason why uh, I, somebody that was on one of my Q and A's uh, said that, because I've been telling them I'm, I'm playing, I used to not play solo games at all, ever. Because it's just not why I want a game. I want a game so that I can interact with other people across the table and have fun. Um, I don't have a whole lot of fun with just myself. Uh, so, but uh, the situation that I'm in right now is that most of the people in my gaming group have their regular nine to fives. They don't have a whole lot of flexibility during the day when I'm learning how to play games or when I need to learn how to play games. So games that have a solo mode now are really helpful because I can teach myself how to play the game and uh, be ready to go whenever I get to that situation where I'm needing to teach somebody else how to play the game. So the fact that this has a solo mode, somebody said, you need to try that out because it's actually a really good solo mode game. So this is another one that I'm going to get. Uh, it actually ratcheted itself up a couple of spots on this list because it has that solo mode, because I'm going to be able to get it to the, to the uh, table uh, a little bit easier. 45 to 60 minutes has been on my shelf for about three years, but uh, right now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of uh, hot on the company because I've really enjoyed Votes for Women. That's a really good game. Uh, it's a difficult game for the suffragists, what I, which that's uh, thematic, that's historical, and so, uh, but it's, it's a really neat game, uh, and I really enjoyed it a lot. So I'm going to go home and, and try to get this to the table here pretty quick. So that is uh, Shores of Tripoli. So my number three, <clears throat> my number three is a game that I own. It's a game that's been on my list to play for a long time, but also one <clears throat> that I feel like I really need a teacher. I would really rather not learn this one from the rule book. Yep. Uh, but my main game group here in Vegas is my family. And while they have progressively started to play heavier and heavier games, and during the pandemic, we jumped into some legacy games, mm -hmm. Gloomhaven, now Frosthaven, but this kind of heavy game has never really been on their radar. And that is Math. <laughs> yeah, that's heavy. That's a yep. yeah. Uh, so this one is on my shelf, and I'm just waiting for the right opportunity more than anything else. Yeah. I'm certainly interested in giving it a try. Yeah. No, this is a, this is actually a really good game, but you do a lot of math, um, which isn't a big deal. But that's one of the main put-offs for me is that I I'm not very good at number crunching and figuring out the best path forward, mm -hmm. which you have to do with this game a lot. But Does it's really cool. It's re it is a really good game. Does it have a spreadsheet option? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it does not, which is one of the problems I think. So, real quick, because I also have not played Power Grid. Yeah. But the weird thing is, my little sister, who is way less nerdy than I am, yeah. like <laughs> infinitely has played it and loves it. Wow. Yeah. That's so. fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's, it's a fun game, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's just that you, you are doing a lot of math throughout the game. It's not like you get a break and you can just play. And no, you're doing math <laughs> at almost every single junction in the game. But it's fun um, and it's thematic. It's a cool idea. They've got a lot of different maps for the game now too. So I think it's good, but man. Yeah. A lot of math. It's a tough one for me to get to the table, for sure. Yeah, understood. All right, BJ, number three. This is a very popular game for a lot of people. And I, for me and my game group, we just, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's art, I don't know if it's just a weird asymmetry, or if it's just that nobody really wants to play cute animals all afternoon. It's Root. I have never played this game. Um, it's interesting because I backed their game Arcs, which is a 4X space game that has the similar art. So I'm kind of like, I don't think the art's throwing me off here. I, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, you've got birds, cats, and raccoons. Oh my! You know, you think that I would be great. I mean, plus they're asymmetrical woodland creatures and they're out there, you know, and they're exploiting, they're crafting, they're decreeing, they're mobilizing. It seems like a game that I would want. It should get me to the table, but no. And, yeah. 
it, it's it's polarized. I don't know if you've heard about that. I mean, that's the other thing is some people just think that the asymmetry and everybody's got a weird way to try to play, and you kind of don't know how the other people are playing. So you you feel like you have to learn so much just to be competitive. And wait, your win condition is what? You have to divide everything by five? Oh, <laughs> you have to be good at power grid. And okay, and what do my people? Oh, we just collect nuts? Okay, what? <laughs> and that's, I think, and, and I just, I, I would play it if other people wanted to play, but our game group has always just sort of said, yeah. why don't we just, no. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, and there's also the added factor that it's, because of the asymmetry, it's a lot harder to teach because it like every single faction plays so differently yeah. that you know there literally has to be one person who knows how all of the factions work yeah. in order to to even start it, to teach the game. It's almost like you have to teach the game four times. Yes, because you have to show everybody how they do the. Thing. I've never played this game either, but and asymmetry is usually one of the things that that. Uh, makes me want to play a game but when I heard how different it is I didn't want to play it another big thing for me is aesthetically speaking like you were saying artwork just does not grab me this artwork is just too far like children's book feel for me and I'm not saying that's bad just for me it doesn't make me want to play the game anymore so I totally get that I love the art yeah absolutely love I the do art too. doesn't surprise me <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm sorry. That was too easy. Kim picked it out, by the way. Yeah, oh. she did. All right, that's fine. Your fault again. All right. All right. Next, Brian. Number three. All right. So this one, this one is literally on my shelf. I will admit I tried to play it once with my children like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. it, it did not go well. Didn't work we, out. Yeah, so I'm not counting it as a play, hmm. is my point. Okay. Um, but uh, that one, th this one is uh, Star Trek Ascendancy. Wow! <laughs> this is, okay, this is like the, the opposite. You, you said you don't play three-player games. This is a three-player only game. Hits the sweet well, spot, baby. Yeah. That, How'd that work out? It's Star Trek. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so there's Trump suits. In your purchasing but, diagram. So, oh yeah, sometimes it's like, nope, I don't care. I'm going to get this. The general rule is no three, like minimum three player game. Uh -huh. But but only three player games. Ding. Yeah. No, it's it, it's it's, it's Star Trek. <laughs> I I gotta say, there is so much in this that I like. I like how they set up the exploration mechanic. I like how, um, like it absolutely like just feels like Star Trek. The way the Federation works, the way the Klingons work, the way the romp, like everything just screams Star Trek. Hmm. I just couldn't figure out the rules. And mm. so, and I even have the expansions. I have the Cardassians. I have the Ferengi. I have the Borg. You know, I just, it's, they're just all on my shelf. Hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, to your defense, Brian, it is not an easy rule book. There is yeah. a whole, there is somebody that made their own rule book and put it out there. It, yeah, it, when you have a game that deep, you have Twilight Imperium as the example. You also have Magic the Gathering as the example to how to do rules and how to be really precise. And unfortunately, Gale Force Nine wasn't as precise as Fantasy Flight and as Wizards of the Coast. And when you and, and so that it's it's daunting when you open the rule book and. If you play any game and you go, oh, here's a question. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go check it out. And it takes you 20 minutes and you still don't know because the way it is, that's very, very frustrating. And, very and frustrating. when you're trying to play with a probably 14-year-old at the time and then like a 10-year-old, like it, it's, I'm the yeah. only one oh, who can yeah. look through it. Yeah, it, it didn't work. Yeah, understood. <laughs> Well, you effectively steered me away from this game. <laughs> because you said it is so much like Star Trek. Oh. I like Star Wars too, Sam. It's okay. I know, but one is clearly better. <laughs> wow. Like, objectively. Didn't, didn't know we were going to go there. <laughs> oh, please come back. Don't come back. Next panel. <laughs> Star Trek versus yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> I can't do it. I like both. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, I like both too. I'm, I'm just more of a next gen person than anything. Else. What are you talking about? You can't like both. 
You have to pick a side and fight for the rest of your life. What kind of American are you, Sam? I am a red-blooded American, just like the rest of us here. Um, <laughs> but I'm a green-blooded Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs>
because it's a Euro game that really they say is a 4X game. But my game group especially, we played it. We have the all in. Mm. And we played it a couple of times. And we sit there and we go, uh, I want to like this yeah. more. Yeah. And we kind of don't. Sure. And for me, yeah, if you know, Pri, if you have to make a choice, if somebody says, you only have one game to play for the <laughs> I would say you, the TI4 experience is so much better than Eclipse. Now, other people might go, no, I like my life, and I don't want to spend 40 hours playing a game, especially with some guy from Seattle who will be yelling at me all night. Uh, so, uh, But TI4 is that. such a beautiful game if you had to choose one over the other. So I can't blame you for, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it's a good game if you like Euro games that pretend to be space games. <laughs> That's, That's a good summation. Very well done. All right. DJ number two. All right. Uh, this one is a game that so many of my friends play, and not a lot of them, but like you got those Gloomhaven y, Dungeon Crawly. We like to play games that are campaigns over weeks and weeks and weeks. And Kingdom Death Monster, which, I mean, this takes up a wing of one of my friends' house. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it does. it's insane. Uh, I've heard about it, and every once in a while I go, You haven't played, you haven't played, you haven't played. And, you know, I mean, look, it has fantastic minis, so of course, okay, well, that's great, because, I mean, that's what we do in Kickstarter. We go, we don't want tokens and cardboard. We want these minis. Thank you, Sandy Peterson. Uh, <laughs> of course, it's got a very disturbing theme, and so some of my friends, they are disturbed, mm -hmm. so of course, they love a theme around their life. Yeah. Uh, of course, it has a massive storyline, which is, again, if you like a game that has a great story to it, who doesn't want to play that? Um, and with me, you'd think, with cards like Red Fist, Love Juice, and Fuzzy Groin, I'd be all over this game. <laughs> but no, I and I, I, I mean, it has everything that a lot of campaigny games have, you know. And yet, I just every time they say let's play, the board looks amazing, all the thing, and I just go, ah, and I have no good reason. I can't tell them no. But it just seems like, I'm like, no, I, I don't. Uh, even though everybody says it's a terrific game. My thing about the game is that if, uh, my, well, the initial thing that I have about the game is that if it starts you off in a loincloth with a lamp, in, a lamp, and that's all? That's all you get. I'm sorry. That's not my idea of fun. Oh. No. Oh, that's... I, I at, did. At, least, <laughs> at least give me a suit of armor or some chain mail. Yeah. You gotta work for that. A club or something. The problem is the club that you get and the stuff that you get to wear is more out of silence of the lambs. You're you know, you're wearing skin suits and you realize, wow, this club used to be in somebody's leg. Okay. Oh, yes. It's very disturbing. Yeah, it's just that's, 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 that's the other that's the other thing that's kept me away from playing KDM. Yeah. It's just it's it's too visceral for me, but... It is the feel-good game of the summer. <laughs> it really is. You should get it today. You don't know what's feeling you, but... It's <laughs> <all good. laughs> Apparently it feels good. <laughs> all right, Brian, number two. All right, so this one, um, let's just say I, I tend to collect dungeon crawl type games no. a lot. And I actually own this one. I got it for free. What? Yes. Wow. Oh, that's um, amazing. We went to a local store and they were they wow. were like like I, I swear like a Cephal Affair, right? Yes. Yeah. That they I swear they were like clearing out the factory so they could get the second edition versions in. Oh, really? So they sent like thirty of them and we went down. We were just like it was a board game cafe. We we're just playing games and, and we won a copy of it. And I I I haven't played it yet. Wow. <laughs> It's because you haven't purchased. You didn't have to purchase it. Wow. So there's no connection yet. That's fair. No, but I also have Jaws of the Lion. Oh. And oh. I haven't played that either. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, it, but I, I like Dungeon Crawls. I think they're, like, every... I've heard nothing but good about it. The, the campaign system, everything that's put into it. And I just, I, I haven't played it. Mm. So, yeah. That's unfortunate. No I, good reason. I played Gloomhaven <laughs> exactly once. Tom played it with Z and I when we first got it in from Cephal Affair, and Tom promptly took it home with him, and we never saw it until the video again. <laughs> That's just the way it went. We did not, we got one chance at that game, and we, Z and I both were like, eh, and Tom was like, fine, I'm taking this home. <laughs> and then we were like, but, but, nope, too late. 
we we can't make a second opinion. Yeah. Too bad. Exactly. Too bad. <laughs> We don't need your opinions. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is uh, just so much game. And uh, I just, I, I, I have never played it again. I played it once, and that was it. And I was like, eh. So, not my, not my cup of tea. My number one. And uh, we are, I don't know if we have an hour time limit, but if we do, we're pushing it. And that's okay. Uh, I don't see anybody else coming in, so we should be good. All right, my number one. Uh, somebody else coming in? Oh, we have another hour. Oh, well, we're just going to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you all had nothing better to do. Number one. <laughs> all right. My number one is a game that I actually picked up at uh, Gen Con 2020. Uh, what was the first one back after COVID? It was 2022. Is that right? Yeah. Sure. Where they had, where they had kind of a diminished... Uh, right, and it was also in like Capcom. October. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I actually picked it up then, and I picked it up because it is Vincent Dutrait's artwork. Um, if you don't know, I am a huge Vincent Dutrait fanboy. If it has Vincent's artwork, I will more than likely buy it. And more than likely simply means that if I have that much money in my bank account at that particular moment in time, I will probably buy it and then ask for forgiveness for my wife later. <laughs> That's generally how it goes with Vincent Trades artwork. And uh, on top of that, Studio H is doing a pretty good job putting out really good games, really nice games. And uh, so I was like, I'm definitely going to pick this up. Another reason why, it's role-playing-ish style, story-driven campaign type stuff. And uh, JT, my buddy, that does stuff on the uh, uh, flip side with me. This is a game that he wanted to play as well. So I picked it up, sat on the shelf ever since. Uh, at Origins last year, picked up the expansion. I hadn't even played the game yet. <laughs> it's just more cards, but I, I want the expansion. It's more. It's more, yes. <laughs> But uh, Old Stray is uh, just one of those games that I've, I've always wanted to play. I just haven't found. Everything keeps like nuzzling its way ahead of it. And I'm like, but Old Tree, no, you gotta do this first. No, but, but that one, no, this one first. No, that one over there, no, this one first. It just keeps happening that way. But sooner or later, we will get this played. I just haven't had it made yet. So that's my number one, Old Tree. Well, before I get to my number one, <clears throat> uh, I do want to take a moment to mention that we have, at the Arcane Wonders booth, a game called Sherlock 13. Yeah. With Vincent to trade art. No. Let's see, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so, no. Oh, box it's deduction that. game. Marketing manager Come on, making bye. a sale on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> it's All my right. job. Uh, well done. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. Well done. So, my number one is another one that has actually recently been renovated to by, by yeah. Arcane, uh, not by us, by, by Awakened Realms. Uh, I do not have the deluxified version, but I do own the original and the card game and the dice game. I have played none of them, <laughs> and that is Castles of Burgundy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, did you hear that? That was the first time we had a collective sigh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> No. I want to play it. Please help me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it is. All right, yeah, let's there do you it. Go. There's, <laughs> even, a, there's yeah. even a deluxe version in the hot games. Wow. There, there is. Yep. There is. And then I'm going to wind up playing it and wanting that, even though I already have three copies. Of yep. <laughs> and I haven't played it either. <laughs> wow. You have the deluxe copy? Wow. No, I don't. But oh, I haven't. Yeah, I, I haven't played it at all. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So that's my number one. All right, number one. Number one, DJ. All right, this is a game that is a popular game that uh, I really have no good reason for not playing. I was even taught how to play this game. What? I was even given this game for free. Wow. And so some and and the person that taught me is always willing to play. He's taught so many people to play. The person that gave it to me is my friend that said, "I would like you to teach me how to play. Here's a free copy." And I have not played my number one, Ark Nova. <laughs> oh, another one. <laughs> Yes. I, also like I said, great game. Played it dozens of times. And, uh, I, know I, also it's, own it. I also got it for free, and I also haven't played it. Wow. There we go. 
See that, Bree? So hate her, please. Thank you. <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah, you look, monkeys, I'm elephants. Delightful. Building a zoo. What's not to love? Matt Damon built a zoo, didn't he? So what? I mean, I, 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 uh, I love to terraform Mars. And so they tell me, if you love terraforming Mars, you're going to love building a zoo. It's the same thing. Oh, um, uh, but okay. no. Uh, maybe if it was a space zoo. Maybe if it was a zoo on Mars. Where, How about space uh, bees? You know, and Arnold was there. Come up here, Cohagen. Build me a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no good reason. I don't know why. I just have never played oh, it. Right. And I don't think I ever will. So somebody needs what? to make Mars Nova, is what he's saying. <laughs> Mars Nova Mars was a great Nova. idea. Yes. I like how you think, Sam. You and I, Cohagen. I have That's actually played this game. <laughs> I have actually yeah. played this game, and I don't ever want to play it again. Yeah. Wow. It's just, it's the, the whole mechanism of uh, <laughs> you're, you're only scoring or how low your lowest score is affects something. It's so confusing to me, and I don't like games that do that, where they have you score two things, oh, and yeah. then you get the lowest of, or the lowest, it's the difference between the two in Ark Nova, is that right? Yeah, they right. meet, and if they cross Wherever each other. Meets, and I'm like, that's if they They have to Come buy each other on. dinner, <laughs> And then if those just, two, they get married... Just give that's me a fun. victory yeah, that's point score oh, that I can say, fun. here, I reached this level. Don't pull me back at the end of the game because I didn't do everything you wanted me to do. I don't like that. But it's a good design, just not for me. Not for me at all. And my, my buddy JT loves it. He loves this game. So I also haven't played this. But in my defense, what? no one's given me a free copy. So. <laughs> JT will not want to part with it, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. All right, Brian's number one. All right, this so. This one's not going to get a call. I think I side. need to, like, scoot over before I reveal this one. <laughs> yeah, he might. He might. Don't, so, don't go out of camera shot, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, uh, I have actually always wanted to play this game. I would gladly play this so game. Many people say that. Um, but considering what the game is, no one has ever invited me to play the game. There's probably a hidden message there. <laughs> You're not wrong. Um, this is also one that I have not bought because I know Kim would not play it either. Yeah, so that's, true. that's not an a very issue. Good two -player game. Anyways, so my number one is Twilight Imperium. <laughs> any edition i haven't yeah, played any, any of like like let's like it it's been out since like first edition came out in 1997 yep. i have literally never had a like, chance to you play know it. trivia about this game that oh, you've yeah. never played I said <laughs> it looked the hard. man got like pneumonia from punching out all of the cardboard in that first edition just so you could play it <laughs> he did it himself he made it himself he walked through snow banks in minnesota just to get you the copy I'll of that game both ways no there's no hills in minnesota <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so well i i understand i mean this is one of my favorite games it was my number two spot for the longest time but it has slipped uh, all the way to 78 in my top 100. Wow, okay. that's a drop. It's okay. I would I never have been on this panel. I cannot <laughs> get it to the table. It is so sure. hard to get it to the table. Um, we were, I was just talking with another guy earlier today about this, where you, know, if you, you can't just sit down and play. You have to schedule a day to do it. Yeah. You have to give people homework. Go home, watch a video or two, read the rules online, and then I'll think about teaching you how to play TI4. Yeah. That's usually how it goes, because it takes so long. If you have to spend an hour and a half just teaching how to play the game to where they are confident enough to be able to get into it and go, that's hard to get through. Most people are done with their game in an hour. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. if you're going to teach a game for an hour and then expect people to sit down for four to eight hours playing a game, that's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. No oh, how, yeah. No matter how much you like it. Last year over in the, the open game room, there, there, people had set it up. Um, I was running some, some demos over, over there uh, 
I was we we, when we were being sneaky demo guys last year. Oh, yeah. Um, but they'd set it up at like eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, ten o'clock at night they're still going. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. and, and awesome. here here's the thing, it should not be that way. It should not be that way. If you want to play a, a game of TI four, get you and three other people. Four player game. That's it. That's your starting point. And then if you like it, then you start adding players. But keep that core of four, and it's a lot easier to go. Now, I will say this, because it is one of my favorite games, and there's a documentary out there with Christian Peterson, and it's called Space Cat Peace Lions, and he talks about how he wished the game would be played, because they have tournaments. It's very strategy-oriented. If you play again with those folks, it is just like, okay, well, you're going to beat me because you're super mathing this game. But he said it, he likes it as a role-playing game. Mm. And, you know, Sam, you're right. It's a game where people are – it's daunting. And so when I play or want to play with friends, we make it a day. Yeah. We're going to have beverages. We're going to have food. It's going to be a party. You're going to be here all day. And don't worry if you don't know how to play because I want you to experience this game yeah. because it's like so many different games within a game. There's negotiation, social, almost social battling. There's engines. There's, I mean, there's so much happening that you feel like you could be playing multiple games in a day, even yep. though it's the same game. Yeah. Such beautiful asymmetry. But, you know, Sam, it is the teacher basically has to go, I don't ever intend to win this game. Right. I just want the people at the table to experience the beauty of the game, yep. including the fact that it is like role playing. If you get a particular faction, I'll tell a story and say, I'm going to play like these people, and here's why. And that makes it an experience as opposed to I'm trying to play a game to win. But you're right. You, you can't go, hey, guys, you want to come over and play Twilight Imperium? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah, never going to happen. Guys, right. We'll just knock it out and yeah. then go to lunch. Um, yeah. <laughs> It is a terrific creation that has been improved upon from, you know, Edition 1 all the way to Twilight Imperium 4, yeah. which is, they, they've done a great job, which yeah. Christian really didn't do. I mean, he did a little bit with Twilight Imperium 4, mm -hmm. but the expansion also was is something that was done by the guys at Fantasy Flight. It's a big boy. It'll always be a favorite of mine yep. if it's Absolutely. presented in the right way. Yeah, yeah. It has to be. It, it's all about presentation. It's all about presentation, but it is a great game. Um, but unfortunately, people just don't get past that eight-hour price tag more, more often than not. Or, 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 or 12 to 14 hours. No, it should really be eight hours. Yeah, that's, I don't know. I don't know why that happens at my house. Well, because you take two hours for, you take two hours for lunch. You're you still talking a work for, shift yeah. of a board game. <laughs> yes, you are correct. You are yeah. correct, and it's much more fun than work. I'm you are legally you entitled to breaks during this game. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, the government, the government, right. the, the government comes in at that point. Right. Yeah, the government. Comes like in you all take a thirty. Yeah, yeah. Get out of absolutely. Here. All right. Well, that is our top five games we've never played for no good reason. Um, I think once we started talking about it, we found some good reasons, but they're still not good reasons. Just buckle down and get it done. Thank you for coming. Um, I do have my own channel called The Flip Side. If you don't know, you can scan that. You can scan that QR code, and uh, that'll take you right to all my socials. So thank you. For joining us for Sam and Friends panel, top five games you've never played for no good reason. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs>